the birth mom had, you know, consumed like a pint or of vodka or whiskey or something like that two hours prior to going into the hospital to give birth to him. So he was, he was born, you know, he was born drunk. They did tell us that mom drank a lot and our reaction to that was cool. At least she didn't do a lot of the hard stuff. We were just ignorant. You know, we did not know what alcohol could do to a baby. I feel alcohol is probably the most profound thing I've ever known in my life. A lot of guilt. I have a lot of guilt about Dama having the fetal alcohol because I blame myself for it. I drank throughout my pregnancy. At four months, he wasn't doing what a four month old child should do. My next baby that we took, she was four months old and she was born to a mom who used heroin primarily and she has far less effects. We had some information about the birth parents um, usage. One was on paper only, we've never met her um, and it stated something very vague, uh, four cigarettes, this was prenatal history, four cigarettes, a half a can of beer and marijuana. No frequency, no, um, no other details. I was not told, no. I had to fi find out on my own, and in order to get the diagnosis, I felt like I was a detective, mm -hmm. because you gotta have the mother's admission, and it was kinda tricky and a lot of work to get the diagnosis. The county workers, they knew little or nothing to do to help, you know, my little boy. So, so I ended up having to be a detective. My four-year-old, she was a major puzzle to me. She had gotten many, many diagnoses before fetal alcohol. She got um, autism, uh, ADHD, um, oppositional defiant. I did research on all the labels and stuff and it still seemed like I didn't know my daughter until I got the diagnosis of fetal alcohol and it it pulled everything together for me. It wasn't a surprise when I received the diagnosis as their family history had a lot of um, chemical abuse and use of all kinds in their background. Now I had no clue, really, the reality of what all this meant to her. <laughs> they confirmed his diagnosis and gave us a very dire list of what this child had in his future, and we put it away and decided not to think about that and, and just said, oh, he's going to be great. We still were so ignorant. I got the report back, and, you know, he's been diagnosed with FASD, which doesn't really mean anything because I'm finding out now that even though he has this diagnosis, it's organic brain damage, it's never gonna be cured. After I found out that he had fetal alcohol, I, I broke down and cried. And I'm, I'm still not happy about it, but I'm dealing with it and trying to find the resources out there to, to help him. We were working at a Native American clinic, another one in Minneapolis at the time, and we had no idea whether or not any of the kids in our clinic had FAS. Mostly, in, entirely because we had never asked the questions, and that's actually the case in most clinics today. So we set up a system where we actually started doing routine, regular, and thorough chemical use screening on all the pregnant women and then asked the question of all the children that we saw as well in terms of their exposure and we found out that 60 to 70 percent of our prenatal patients were drinking alcohol during pregnancy. I did a lot of research on fetal alcohol on the internet and it's still not enough to teach you you have to live it. A lot of the um, supervision was going to need to be changed from the way we had parented our other kids. In the clinic, I see children who are affected uh, in, in many, many different ages and with many different issues.